In this video, we'll talk about simple time value of money calculations, also known as present value and future value calculations. The reason they do these calculations is that money at different points in time is not directly comparable. If you put money in the bank today, that money grows in value through time because you collect interest on it. In fact, it'll work for any investment. For example, when I was working at a hardware store in the early 1980s, we had a profit sharing program where if I left money in the program, say $50 out of my check, every month they would pay me 1% interest on my deposit. Hang on. So at the end of the month, I would have earned, on my original principal, 50 cents in interest. Now the easiest way to write that is to collect terms on the 50. So it's 50 times 1 plus interest, 1.01. .01. So effectively, I could buy today $50.50 in one month by depositing $50 into the profit sharing program. But if I left it in for two months, I would collect interest at the beginning of the month, and then I would collect interest again the next month. So I would grow through time according to what is known as compound interest. So at the end of one month, my $50 would grow to $50 plus interest, $50 and 50 cents. But that would grow to the $50 and 50 cents I have at the beginning of the month plus interest. In this case, it will be $51 and a half a cent. Now, if I substitute the fact that $50.50 is just 50 cents times 1.01 .01 in here, I'm really just multiplying by interest twice, or multiplying by interest squared. This idea holds for any given time period. Every period, if I leave my money invested, what I will do is grow and collect interest, collect interest again, collect interest again, all the way out to some number of periods in the future. To calculate the future value, I would just multiply by 1 plus interest the number of times that I leave the money in the deposit. So I actually worked at the hardware store for six years that's 72 months. So my $50 deposit at the beginning of the time would turn into $50 times 1 plus interest 72 times. Well, I'll have to get the calculator out for that one. 1.01, .01, 1 plus interest, to the power of 72, I'm going to more than double my money times the principal invested of 50, it's 102.36. Oh, 102.35, sorry. What the money grows to depends upon what the interest rate is and how long you leave it deposited. The money will grow faster at a higher rate. It will grow to more the longer you leave it deposited. You can see from the graph that the growth is exponential. But if I go the opposite direction and I ask myself, I want to have $100 in a month, how much do I have to deposit today to get it that's called discounting. I'm just going the opposite direction. 
Well, I know that whatever I deposit today, call it the present value, I'm going to collect interest on it. I want that to grow to be $100 in a month. All I have to do is divide both sides by 1 plus interest. And the amount that I would have to pay to get $100 a month from now is 100 divided by 1 plus interest. So placing $99.01 in the bank, today effectively purchases for me $100 in a month. But that will go backwards in time according to the number of periods that you have the deposit. If I want to have $100, say, 72 months from now, I need $99.01 71 months from now. I need to have a little bit less 70 months from now, a little bit less 69 months from now. The amount that I would invest at the beginning is the cash flow that I want in the future divided by 1 plus interest to the number of times that I leave the money in the deposit. Alternatively, think about some financial instrument that has a single future cash flow, like a zero coupon bond that might be issued by IBM and pay one cash flow, $1,000, in 28 years. How much would you pay to buy that today is the present value of that cash flow. Well, that present value is the future cash flow divided by 1 plus the interest rate, 28 times, because they have to wait for 28 years to get it, that actually is going to be a pretty small number. 1.095 to the power of 28, I'll take the inverse of that, times a thousand, equals $78.78. So in order to buy myself a thousand dollars in 28 years, I have to spend $78.78 today. How much I have to pay for a given future cash flow depends upon how far in the future it is and what the interest rate is. This is an exponential decay. But this doesn't just hold to purchase one future cash flow. If you have a whole set of cash flows, all you need to do to determine the value of it is take the cash flow period one and ask yourself how much you would have to pay today to buy it. It's the cash flow in period one divided by one plus interest one time. The cost of the cash flow in period two is the cash flow divided by one plus interest twice. All the way out to the end you divide by one plus interest say n times. Now the shorthand notation we have for doing this includes this summation sign. That just means add across the periods or dates the discounted value of the cash flow at that date divided by 1 plus interest number of periods between now and that cash flow. For example, suppose that you work part-time at a job you have the option to take some work training that will give you $125 at the end of each of the next nine months. Now, here's a convention. Interest rates are always quoted annually. If you get an interest rate and it says compounded monthly or weekly or daily, the interest rate quote is always annual. And the interest that you actually pay or receive per period is that annual rate divided by the number of periods in a year. In this case, it's a half a percent per month. So on my profit sharing program, it would have been quoted at 12% per year. What is the value of this training? Well, you put it on a timeline. 
and put down each of your cash flows. You receive $125 in a month, $125 in two, three, four, all the way out to nine. The value of $125 in a month is the $125 divided by or discounted by one plus interest one time. The value in period two is divided by one plus interest or discounted two times. The value in period nine is discounted by one plus interest nine times. The value of all of these cash flows, you would just add them up. And this will take you a little while. But if you do this total calculation, the cost of these nine cash flows is $1,097.38. This should be the amount that you would be willing to pay for the bartender training. If the training costs more than this, you'd be better off putting your money in the bank and withdrawing $125 every month for the next nine months. If it's less than that, you'll be better off taking the training. And that's the basis of financial decisions that we'll make throughout the class.